Welcome, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to talk about Google's suite of APIs, in particular the Google Video Intelligence and the Vision API, and briefly about TensorFlow. My name is Manuel Amonategui. I'm the Vice President of Data Science at SpringML. We are a consulting company, about 40 people, and we bring uh, AI, uh, machine learning, predictive analytics, advanced analytics to companies that want to get into that space, but either don't have the know-how, the staff, and we will explore the data with you and kind of come up with you know pipelines and solutions to meet your needs. Uh, but I've also worked in uh, uh, healthcare as a data scientist for four years, uh, as a, um, a quantitative developer uh, at Group One for six years on Wall Street, and as a software developer engineer at Microsoft. So I've been around, and whenever I see tools that really make my life as a professional a lot easier, I mean, it catches my eye and I pay attention. One of those is the, the Google Cloud API suite. Uh, phenomenal set of APIs that can uh, you know, make what would normally be a huge job, tedious job, just you know, seamless and, and trivial. In particular, I'm gonna talk about the Cloud Vision API and the Cloud Video Intelligence API. All of them are great, very powerful, but today we're gonna look at these two, and briefly TensorFlow. Um, uh, the best way to, to, to get a taste of what the Video Intelligence API can do is just to go to the Google uh, Cloud website, the, the yeah, Google Cloud, and uh, let's just look at a quick demo. I'm gonna open, oh, you gotta check you're not a robot, that's fine. I'm gonna do the bikes and dinosaurs. Turn the volume off. And basically, it's feeding in real time a live, a video, not a live video, but a video, but it's processing it in real time, and um, it's learning about it. So they do it in a slightly different way than I would do it. Uh, they're kind of running through the whole thing, and then at the end, presenting uh, the results uh, on the web page. We do it kind of, you know, as it comes, we process it. So uh, because it takes like a minute or two, I'm gonna stop it here and I have the results on the slides. So you saw, right, if you go back to it, you hopefully, oh, here, here are the results. So you clearly see that, you know, there are bicycles here and there's a dinosaur here. So it did pick the dinosaur, it did pick the bicycle, trees, etc. So very powerful at kind of coming up with overall labels about a video, something that would be, you know, uh, you think about that you have thousands and thousands of videos, you can quickly get a taste of what's on these videos. Um, So um, another way that it returns its intelligence, its discoveries, is through a JSON string. And that's what we're using. Right? We're not going to be calling, we don't need to use the, 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 the GUI to get your information, your, your intelligence. Instead, you, you do it directly through the API, and you get this kind of str JSON string that basically tells you, oh, there are bicycles here indeed. And uh, uh, between you know the end offset, end time offset, and beginning time offset, so you, it tells you we're very confident that there are bicycles here between these two times, and that's what we're using here in this, in our demo. And so the first demo I'm going to show uh, is recognizing famous people, getting their headshots, and coming up with a short bio. So let me go to the demo. So. As everything with these Google APIs, everything is in the cloud, so it doesn't matter if you're calling it from a local machine. If you're using these Google Cloud APIs, you're still passing your information to the cloud. So you're better off working directly in the cloud, and that's what I do. I have a, a virtual machine uh, in the cloud, and that's going to reduce the latency. Everything is going to be in the cloud. So let me just get this started. So uh, our script, our pipeline script is called Video Processing. Dot .py, it's in Python, and I'm passing the uh, a clip of the first trailer of Blade Runner, and this is the Spring ML Celebs, is the bucket on the cloud, because everything is in the cloud of where I'm going to put my results. So I fire that off, it's cleaning up if there were anything in the cloud before, and it's searching for people in the video. And now here, I can go, I got a monitoring script, that's going to give us the visuals of what it is finding, if it finds anything. So let me just pull that up. Let's get a web page here. There was just one outfit making replicants that super. Here you have the trailer. I'm going to take the Dr. volume Rail off. And um, it's already found actor Harrison Ford. So we know Harrison Ford, you know, is a famous actor in, in, in Blade Runner. And let's see what else it finds us. As you can see, it's continuing to process through every uh, uh, frame in the video. And he found Rick Deckard. That's interesting, right? It found the, uh, uh, the character and the actor. And he sees them as two different people, which is fine. Uh, there's very little uh, uh, filtering going on in this code. It's very raw, so plenty of areas to improve it. And he found another one, Joe Turkel. So we'll stop it here. And it kind of gives you a small bio. So let's talk about what happened here. Let me go back to the presentation. That's fine. I can continue in the background. So what happened here? We took the raw footage, so the Blade Runner 
um, you know, a trailer. We pass it to the Google Video Intelligence API. Here, it, instead of looking for bicycles and dinosaurs, we're just looking for faces or people. Everything else we don't care, we reject. But it finds all sorts of things. But we are only interested in the high confidence of finding a person or a face. And that's what this kind of you know, this icon is doing. Uh, once we found these people, where we say, okay, there are definitely people here, high confidence on this frame. We pass that frame to the Google Vision API. The Google Vision API will uh, look for the people. There could be multiple people on, on, on an image and take their headshot. Once you have the headshot, you pass it back to the Google Vision API and you're doing a web search. And this is the same thing as just dropping that image into a browser and getting you know, results about the image. And you take, we take the first reply, that's all we're doing, and that's when you, you some situations you'll get Rick Decker versus Harrison Ford because they're both super famous and they both may come first on a web search and on a web image search. And then we pass it to the Wikipedia API. And that simply is going to get you, we ask for the first paragraph of whatever is in the Wikipedia. And that's how we got that cool looking um, uh, display and the video playing. So this is a toy problem, right? What if you wanted to look for people that, that weren't uh, celebrities, right? That's probably a much more realistic approach. So here, we're recycling the same footage, the same uh, pipeline. Put the footage into the vid video intelligence API. We're looking for people, so same, same drill. We don't care about dinosaurs, we don't care about anything else. And then pass it to the Vision API. Vision API, find a picture, take headshots, however, however many there are in a picture. And this is when it changes. We're then piggybacking on the inception, on a pre-trained Inception V3 model. Inception V3 model is an incredible discovery. It basically is taking an industrial strength uh, uh, trained CNN that was trained on uh, ImageNet. ImageNet is a collection of 14 million images with labels, huge data set, and uh, uh, ImageNet can, can uh, successfully recognize over 200,000 categories, so dinosaurs, bicycles, sunset, happy people, sad people, whatnot. So what you're doing with transfer learning is you're saying, okay, this Inception V3 trained model, where you're basically just seeing the weights, somebody else went with a battery of machines and GPUs, trained it for a week or however long it took, and then you ended up just getting the weights from like magic, so that there's no more pain, right? It, all, all the discovery is already there through the weights. And all you do is kind of splice at the end your own images, your custom images. In my case, I'm going to use pictures of my kids as guinea pigs. Inception has no idea what my kids look like. Um, and so we're going to say, I don't care about your 200,000 categories. I care about discovering either it's kid one or kid two. That's what I want to find in my videos. So I, I gave him, I found 40 pictures of my kids. I pass it through a filtering process we'll talk about briefly afterwards that created out of those, those 40 created 5,000 pictures and uh, basically two labels, two categories, everything else I don't care. And you just splice them at the end, do a little bit of training on top of that. So nothing compared to, you know, 14 million images. We're talking about less than 10,000 10, images. A lot easier, something you can run on a laptop, something you can run in the cloud very easily, uh, a simple, you know, a VM in the cloud, nothing fancy, no GPU and have it still be able to recognize something it never was trained to recognize in the first place. That's transfer learning. It's really powerful. We've got to say that it probably would have been uh, more powerful, more accurate uh, if you did it from scratch. But, you know, this is like, you know, five minutes of work versus two weeks of work. Huge difference and know-how. So let me show you a demo. So we're recycling as much as we can from the original. Um, I think it's called not setups. Now let me fire it up. So same concept, same pipeline, very similar pipeline. So I'm calling a different script and I'm passing family five, which is a family picture, a family movie I took. And we're going to use the same buckets in the cloud. Wait till it cleans up and same thing here. So we're going to get out of this one. Uh, this one is called and go here, refresh, and here it is, right? This is the video I took of my kids. You're going to see my kids are coming. Here they are. And the video is, uh, it found it, right? It found kid one with a very high level of accuracy. It says it's really short, it says kid one. Let's see if it can find kid two. 
So this is a little bit slower than uh, the, the, the original. As you can see, we're still processing video images, even though we went through the video, because uh, it's doing a little bit more than the celebrity video did. Um, and we found Kit2 with a high level of accuracy. Okay, so um, oh, we can kill this. Oh, it's already stopped. Fine. And let's go back to the presentation. Briefly, uh, we looked at the, this is the, the website. The website is really independent the, uh, from the processing. Uh, the main intelligence is happening in the virtual machine, uh, you know, close to the API, close to where the, the MP4 files are. Uh, the, the website is using App Engine. It's a very simple Flask website that simply uh, checks uh, if there are any images in a folder on Google Cloud. And if they are, it shows it. So it's very simple, it has nothing, you know, very little control, but at least it gives you a visual about what um, what it's finding and kind of runs a video also uh, independently. It's fun to see, uh, you know, put them side by side. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing here, but here is a quick slide, and I will get back to the slide afterwards with my contact information. Two interesting blogs uh, uh, if you're interested in this topic. So the first one talks about the recognizing uh, the facial recognition of famous people, and the second one is facial recognition of not famous people. And they go in a lot more detail about the code. And I'm going to briefly look at one. And um, the TensorFlow um, document, very useful if you're uh, new to this about transfer learning, very well written. And also um, uh, another uh, um, uh, well written. Uh, uh, in a transfer learning uh, toy project uh, that I recommend to watch if you're interested. Um, actually, let me go back here. Let's open this guy here. Um, so this is the this is the, the Google post I wrote the the blog post I wrote about uh, not recognizing not famous people, and I just want to highlight a few things. All you need well you need to have TensorFlow, so you have to pip install it or download it, however you would install it with your OS. Um, this is the Keras image data generator. That's just really cool. And, and that's what I discovered from uh, uh, this the last uh, blog post. Uh, he's the one who used it. And I said, oh, that's a great idea. Basically, so because I only had 40 pictures, it will take each one and torture those pictures a little bit. And you're going to get thousands of variations of those pictures. And that's actually going to help your accuracy. Otherwise, it's going to overfit on what it's learning. Um, so you're going to download. So you need to have TensorFlow. And you're also going to download retrain.py. And that's all you need, those two things. Retrain.py is like a magical script. It does everything for you. It's going to download Inception. It's going to prepare Inception. All you have to do is follow this uh, uh, directory format where you put a kids, uh, whatever you're, you're, you're looking, whatever you're trying to, to classify, into their individual folders. So if you have if you're trying to classify 10 different kids, you'd have 10 different folders with images in each folder and the folder name would be the label, right? It's that simple. Once you run it, you call uh, you know, you call a bunch of parameters. You call the retrain uh, script and for example, you tell it where um, where your kids' photos are, doesn't matter what the name is, as long as it knows where to find them. All the other ones, the retrain label, retrain graph, uh, inception, it knows where to find them. You don't have to worry about that. It's gonna, it's gonna create those folders for you. All you need is a retrain and something to classify uh, like this. And um, uh, and you have some controls, right? Learning rate, the batch size, uh, number of steps, and it's just like any other model, right? You're gonna see it uh, uh, kind of work through your data and eventually kind of uh, the error, the loss drop and the, the accuracy rise, and you want to get to where you get a training and testing uh, more or less together, right? You don't wanna have 100% on your training and you know 50% uh, on your testing, on your validation. That means your model is not learning anything. It's over overfitting. So you wanna have you know, these two numbers kind of equal, and that's really it. Then you have a model, the output, um, it's going to output this retrain underscore graph dot pb and it's your train model and you can then uh, uh, pass it uh, uh, you know like this is part this is that that, that flower one that the, the flower blog i talked about um, uh, this is how to retrain an image classifier for new categories on tensorflow they talk about flowers and i'll show you how to uh, get an individual prediction uh, to test your model because we're not really using that here right we're just feeding everything into the that pipeline automatically. So really simple, really easy to use. Um, uh, in in literally you know minutes you can get you know you can get up and running. Uh, the hard parts really are finding enough class images of whatever you're trying to classify, and then uh, you know if you don't have enough, I didn't have enough, 40 was not enough. Uh, kind of finding a system to create more the the Keras image data generator. So um, my email address is here. 
um, you know definitely uh, check out these links if you're interested in in more and more details this is definitely a talk I would, this is a talk I would do in a little bit longer time but I wanted to keep it under half an hour thank you